We are here at the University of Washington, where an encampment, a protest encampment against the war in Gaza has been happening for the last three weeks. Your intrepid reporter, Mark Taylor Canfield, is on the scene and carrying equipment, a camera, and other gear, uh, some of my musical equipment, to the encampment, which, as of today, has announced that it will be disbanding by three o'clock on Monday. Yes. As of three o'clock Monday, the protesters have agreed to move from that site. And this comes after some negotiations. Some students uh, attended the Board of Regents meeting and presented a list of demands, uh, including uh, ending any kind of partnership with the Boeing Corporation, which the protesters blame for a lot of the weapons being used in in Gaza right now. So we're on the campus right now. It's getting kind of dark, but we're headed towards the main encampment where people have been uh, camping for about three weeks now. So these are some of the images that we've been seeing down here. This people have had the protests going on and we're coming up on the tents now. So the encampment is still quite large, as you can see. It stretches for both sides of the quad. So this tent has been here for a while, the Liberation Library. And there's still a lot of tents here. So they have a few days before uh, they've agreed to leave. A lot of tents here. And they're still referring to it as University popular university for Gaza and also the the liberation zone but they've had some demands from the very beginning that are right here and they're still there so that's the main thing that they've been doing Just hold this back so we can see yeah so those are the demands and they've been very consistent in those demands. And there are still quite a lot of tents here. So one of the demands, of course, is cutting ties with any kind of partnership with Boeing. And Boeing is a huge corporation in Seattle, employing thousands and thousands of people, billions of dollars in profits every year. So it's a major part of the Seattle scene, the Seattle political scene. And they have a lot of power here, just like Microsoft, Amazon, Expedia, Starbucks, you name it, Google. Uh, all of these major corporations have headquarters in Seattle. Um, and they are, you know, a big influence on local politics here. And even though it's considered a progressive part of the country, uh, there is a lot of corporate control over what happens here. And there's a beautiful moon tonight. There goes probably a Boeing plane right there. Of course, everybody's watching what's happening in Rafa right now. All, all over uh, Gaza, it's been a human rights crisis. There's the prayer tent. And then, yeah, these have been here since the beginning, these signs. Cut all ties with Boeing. That's one of the main messages in this part of the country. There are uh, demonstrations going on across the country, of course. Students have occupied many campuses. So police were used to uh, dismantle and destroy the encampments and kick the protesters out, making lots of arrests at UCLA, uh, where they used rubber bullets and other so-called less lethal, but potentially lethal crowd control devices. A lot of chemical spraying things, so batons, you know, uh, that also happened at Columbia University in New York City, which caused a big controversy, the heavy-handed actions of the police. And so, but at the same time, at my alma mater, the Evergreen State College, there was negotiations going on with the students. They had an encampment there, and they came to some kind of a memorandum of agreement. Um, also at the University of Wisconsin uh, in Milwaukee, the the administration of the university there and the students got together and had meetings and they uh, got an agreement. So 
it looks like that's what's happening here in uh, Seattle at the at the University of Washington, uh, where the college president has decided to come to, to to make some kind of an agreement with the students and then ask them to dismantle the encampment by Monday at 3 p.m. It's now Friday evening, and so I'm going to see if we can find Matthew and do an interview so they can talk to us about what's really going on here. But we've been covering it. I've been covering it for Democracy Watch News and the MTC Report since the beginning. I've been down here many nights in a row and also was asked to perform some music, being you know a, a well-known musician. and they, People have seen me perform in front of uh, the city council and uh, other protests in Seattle and at the Central Saloon where we have a first Friday jam for Art Walk and people like Aaron Jones show up, guitar legend, superstar here in Seattle, opened for the Rolling Stones on their European tour last year, but he shows up there, we have a great time. And, uh, oh, we've got water. People have a lot of supplies here. So people have been living here for weeks and there are all sorts of supplies that the community has contributed, including stoves and lots of food. Fresh vegetables and fruit and all sorts of great stuff. And so it's very organized. They have their own generators. They got some hot tea. They got some tea. So it's being reported in the corporate media that uh, by Monday at 3 p.m., the protesters have agreed to remove the encampment. So that's what's being reported. Let's find out from somebody who's actually here at the encampment what they know and what's really going on. So that's what's being reported. How accurate is that and what is the latest update? It's accurate if you want to frame it that way. But the way I put it is that we have gotten an administration to agree to a couple of things. The first is the establishment of a Palestinian Studies Center. Second is the hiring of Palestinian of Palestinian staff and faculty. And the third is that at least 20 at least 20 students from Gaza will, that have been displaced by the ongoing genocide will be able to go to the University of Washington with their tuition waived and with other fees and expenses covered. But what's most importantly to the original demands that we were out here for is that the University of Washington will start the process of divestment. Now I'm under no illusion that that's going to happen quickly. I'm under no illusion that administration and the Board of Regents will try and get it done quickly. So there's still the so there's still the need for us to continue to push forward. But but it does get us started on that path. And most and one of the most important parts is that they are also going to disclose the investments that they do have. And that information is power and that's information that we can use as leverage against the university to launch further campaigns in the future. And lastly the University of Washington has said that, you know, for the community, for the community that was out here, for those that, for students that were camping out here, they're going to give amnesty for that. That's a pretty important part. And in return, we get back to what corporate media is reporting that we're going to leave this space by Monday at 3 p.m. That's what the university is getting from us. Now, we are we weren't out here in the first place to just to just have an encampment. We were out here to put pressure on the university, and you know. There's going to be a lot of people that are disappointed by, by what we are able to get out of administration right now. And I, and I agree with them in a lot of ways. And I think let's unite on that and let's unite on continuing to fight to pressure administration. So is there any contingency plan for if the university just doesn't follow through with any of this? Yeah, I mean, I expect that they're not, I expect that they're going to try not to. I expect that they're going to set up a lot of bureaucratic channels that they're going to try and use the Board of Regents meetings to, to slow roll this. And I mean, we have to continue to be ready to put pressure on administration. Like I said earlier, I'm, a, I'm under no illusion that they're going to try and make this quick. And we know that it has to be fast, but you know, like Fred Hampton said, you have to go as fast as the people are able to go. And right now, this is, this is as fast as we're able to go, and I'm hoping that we're able to continue to mobilize more students in the future. The Board of Regents is meeting, what is it, June 13th. June 13th, we're going to see the Board of Regents meeting, and divestment better damn well be on their agenda. They're going to have to vote. They're going to have to vote on that, and if that isn't on their agenda, students are going to be out there against that. I guess I could ask you this, like, so, do you, obviously, you feel like there's, you know, something, something productive has taken place here, because you actually got the, the university's attention. 
and uh, do you do you think that people do you think the students will hold out you know the uh, the option of more protests in the future as uh, a response if there is no um, direct movement on the part of the administration? I think so. I mean, look at look at what we saw at this encampment over the past few weeks. I've seen a lot of students that have come up that have said, I've never been at a protest at this university before, but I'm seeing what's happening in Palestine. I'm seeing the genocide in Gaza. I'm going to join in. I'm going to help serve food. I'm going to help, I'm going to help keep watch at night. I'm going to help tidy up the place. Or even I'm just going to contribute my, my energy by just being in this space. There's a lot of students that you know, did that. And I think that as we go forward and as we continue to educate students, as we continue to energize community members, we're going to be able to continue to put pressure on administration. And it's not always going to look like an encampment. There's other tactics that work as well. Yeah, I mean, I'm not saying that that's what we're going to see here, but we saw a lot of success with building occupations, like at Cal Poly Humboldt. We've seen a lot of success with, with a lot of other methods as well at other universities. So if the University of Washington administration doesn't, doesn't follow through on its commitments, it's going to have a hell of a fight on its hands. So how do you feel um, about the support you've received both from members of the community and members of the faculty? It seems like you guys have plenty of supplies and there's been a lot of support coming in. How does that feel? It, it's amazing. I, this, none of this would have been possible without the community and all of us here recognize that. This is, this is a fight of everybody here. This isn't just students. This is about faculty and community members coming together to fight for Palestinian liberation. Yeah, I mean, and I'm, and you know, a lot of these supplies were, we're gonna put that towards the, we're gonna put that towards the next fight. If another university nearby begins their own encampment, we're gonna put those resources towards that. If we see those universe, if we see these resources being well used for any other direct actions, we're going to put it towards that. But at the end of the day, these resources will be well used, uh, and the plan is that for anything that we don't see a use for right now, we're going to be giving it back to through mutual aid groups to the to those that don't to those that are lacking shelter right now. So we've seen at my alma mater, the Evergreen State College, um, an agreement there. The University of Wisconsin in Milwaukee, that encampment came up to an, came to an agreement with the administration. And in high contrast, uh, contrast to what happened in UCLA, where there was mass counter protests and also uh, a police uh, sweep. Also at Columbia University, very controversial uh, police activity there. So, in comparison, do you see a difference in tactics? Do you think that this, this might be a, a trend? This idea that um, protesters uh, at university campuses actually come to agreements like this? It seems like it's a, it, it's spreading. Do you know of uh, maybe, maybe other colleges where that's happening now? Yeah, I mean, University of Minneapolis also saw, pro University of Minnesota in Minneapolis also saw protesters there able to win an agreement with, with administration. Now, I wouldn't say that this is a tactic on the part of protesters to negotiate. I mean, I believe that students at Columbia and, and UCLA also saw, you know, very specific demands as their goal. This isn't us stopping, stopping part way. This is us saying this is a step forward. This isn't victory. This isn't victory by any means. Victory will be divestment, and this is a step forward to divestment. And even then, true victory is going to be the liberation of the Palestinian people. We're not there yet, so we're going to have to keep on continuing to fight. Thank you so much. I appreciate it.